Well, it's the film we've been waiting a hundred years to make. Baz Luhrmann's $160 million epic, Australia. The star of the film is without doubt the Australian landscape itself. And sharing billing with the spectacular Outback Horizons are two of our most famous stars, Nicole Kidman and my old mate, Hugh Jackman. Hugh plays a handsome, heroic drover who literally sweeps our Nick off her feet. For Hugh, it's the role of a lifetime. For our flagging film and tourism industries, it could be just the thing to pull them out of the doldrums. I've interviewed Hugh many times now, but never before has there been so much riding on his success. Welcome to Australia. You'd be a lot more comfortable if you changed into something a little less uh, constricting. You keep your eyes on the road. We've always known that somewhere out there where the big sky meets an empty land, there was the great Australian movie waiting to be discovered. It's almost like the colonial search for the fabled inland sea. We felt sure it was there, but first we had to find it. Action. You hold now, hold it. It was Baz Luhrmann's dream to create that historic epic and recapture the romance and grandeur of the sweeping Hollywood classics. Big and like this. Baz audaciously named his film Australia and assembled our most celebrated actors led by Nicole Kidman and Hugh Jackman. <sighs> Dueling makeup. Just days from its world premiere and it's time for reflection. But first, Hugh and I get a bit of that Hollywood treatment. This is a low budget end of town over here. <laughs> you look good. Oh, thank you, you look Actually, terrific. Actually, too good. Um, Liz? Yeah, thanks. Sorry, mate, I'll be about another half hour. <laughs> this is, if I'm right, the biggest movie, hmm. most expensive movie, widest widescreen movie ever made in Australia. By, I mean, daylight second. I mean, there's going to be nothing really of this scope or size, and it's fantastic. And how fitting that we have a fly in the studio. I don't, I don't think I've ever known a fly to I be in the studio. I thought you'd arranged it. <laughs> budget of $160 million, Australia is a classic love story writ very large. A tale of unlikely romance between a beautiful English aristocrat and a rugged Aussie drover. It's set in the northern outback on a cattle station called Far Away Downs. Mr Drover, I need to speak to you. Now where the you. hell are all the bloody stockmen, eh? That's what I need to speak to you about. Where's Fletcher? We disagreed and I dismissed him. Dismissed? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. What about the cattle? Well, it begs his belief that as he was leaving, he deliberately let the cows out of the, uh, I, I don't know, whatever you call it, and they ran off. Damn! It reaches its dramatic climax as the bombs rain down on Darwin during World War II. Nicole's character basically comes out to catch her husband in Australia on their property um, cheating. She presumes he's cheating. When she comes out, uh, there's a twist and he's actually dead. The place is completely run down and the only way of saving it is to enlist uh, uh, a rough and tumble kind of, uh, or as Baz always says, a rough hewn drover to take the 1,500 head of cattle to Darwin to oh, sell. I wonder who that would be. Yeah, yours truly. There's no more quintessential role in Australian literature, poetry and folklore than Hugh's character, known throughout the entire movie simply as the drover. Take my advice, lady. Grab King Carney's offer and go the hell back to England as quickly as possible. That way, you'd make everybody happy, especially me. When did you first uh, know that this role was for you, the drover? I think it was around about Christmas, three years ago, that Baz first started talking to me about it. We had a Super Bowl party at our house. Um, we invited a few people over and Nicole came over and she, I remember her bounding, bounding in going, I've just got off the phone with Baz and he tells me you're talking to him about the movie, this is fantastic, you've got to do it, you've got to do it. And I said, but I haven't read the script yet, what's it like? She goes, oh, I haven't read it either. I said, you haven't read the script? She goes, oh, no, 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 this is Baz. Just sign on. That's all you need to do, sign That's on. That's an act of faith. It is. Yeah. I totally understand why now. That's because uh, I hadn't finished the script. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Very few people have seen the movie, yet somehow 
Everyone's talking about the kiss, the steamy engagement between Hughes Drover and Nicole's Lady Sarah Ashley, the biggest snog since the gardener kissed Lady Chatterley. You know, one of the first kisses we did, this is a little bit of detail, which may be too much for you, Charles, but we no, were... No, there's never too much detail in these matters, I'm afraid. OK, well, really? OK. Well... Not for me, but for that poor <laughs> lot out there. Of course, yeah. Um, Baz always had us kissing when it wasn't scripted. So we, we didn't know we were going to do it for the day. And it would often be a sunset, and Baz would say, all right, Nicole and Hugh, and I just, Hugh, I want you to ride now, get down and kiss. And, and oh, oh, we're kissing. All right, we're there. we're there. So there was never any sort of build-up. But I remember one of the days, it was incredibly hot. And you know how you get when you're a little bit parched and your saliva gets a little white, you get a little kind of bridges. And I remember kissing Nicole, and as we parted, there was this saliva <laughs> bridge that didn't break. It actually kept extending. And both of us were looking down at this string of saliva. And we both looked and we laughed our head off. And we thought, you know... I know Baz is going to kind of make this look sexy, but it, in reality, it's, well, it's reality. Baz Luhrmann is what is known as postmodern. His films reflect the fact that everything that can ever be said on film has already been said. Romeo. Oh, Romeo. Where for out thou Romeo? So, why not mine the past to remake the future? You'll recognise many epic movies in Baz's Australia, like The African Queen. Again, a woman from a civilised world, charmed by a rough diamond in the wilderness. It worked for Bogey and Hepburn. In Out of Africa, it worked for Redford and Streep. Now it's Jackman and Kidman, and yet another take. Mr. Drover. Yeah. There's only one tent. That's right. For the four of us. Well, we're not really used to uh... a woman. I suppose you think I should be back in Darwin at the church fete or the ladies, uh, whatever you call it. Well, I will have. Forget that it's called Australia. Forget that it's here and and all the significance yeah. that has for us. Just yeah, these movies say, in themselves, this type of movie, this kind of old school Hollywood comedic, romantic adventure, epic story. That I, I don't know how much longer they'll make them. And there's more than just good old fashioned filmmaking riding on this. Tourism Australia has commissioned $40 million worth of commercials on the back of Australia the movie, hoping to match the success of Paul Hogan's famous campaign. Come and say good day. I'll slip an extra shrimp on the barbie for you. Come and say good day. I remember seeing in the paper the other day Paul Hogan saying, oh, I don't think it focuses enough about the people. But I just saw the ad, and my first reaction was, this is great. Because I've been in New York, I've been in LA, and in America, there's a lot of people who say they want to go to Australia, but let's face it, 85% of the population don't have a passport. So a lot of them are not coming. Even George Bush didn't have one until he became president. <laughs> yeah, right. So the people who are coming is what that ad is pitched towards. It's an interesting tag, this one. I mean, the last one that didn't work said, where the hell are you? Yeah. This one says, Australia, get lost. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I don't know why you didn't do it. It's perfect. Was that a movie? Oh, my goodness. I mean, they just don't make movies like that anymore. When Oprah loves a movie, that's advertising you can't buy. We all saw the film. I know. Isn't it? Oh, my God. You haven't seen the film. No, I've not seen the film. You should see it! <laughs> Oprah has embraced this, hasn't she? Oh, fully. She fully embraced it. I think she sees what Baz is trying to do, which is almost bring romanticism back to the cinema, I think. Where the hell are we? This is Studio Six. We actually shot uh, inside there was the the big Darwin ball. This the is a Fox house. studio so complex in there. Sydney. 
If we're going to have a resurgent Australian film industry telling our stories in our own accents, yet competing in a global market, this is one of the places it will happen. This is my office here. Oh, this is it? Yes, it's not a Chinese takeaway, this is it. Do you want to come in? Yeah. Come on in. For that reason, Hugh has based his own production company here, appropriately called Seed Productions. He's hoping to grow great things. Well, right now we're very busy producing Wolverine, so that's pretty massive. But we do have a number of projects, don't we, Lise? Probably three or four? Look at our board, it's a busy board. <laughs> Woolies trout fishing documentary. Not a chance. Oh, sorry. <laughs> For Hugh, the bonus that will come with resuscitating the Australian film industry would be that it creates a job for him in the city where he grew up. At home with his wife, Deborah Lee Furness, and their children, eight-year-old Oscar and three-year-old Ava. You're able to do that in Australia because I hear Nicole feels that she can't. I think it is different for me. bother her more here than over the water. I do know those guys, those paparazzi guys, and they're outside my house quite a bit. And I went up and talked to them, and I said to them, I'd really like it if you could try and protect my children's choice of having a public or private life. And they said, well, how can we do that? I said, well, just don't let them know you're photographing them. I don't want them to feel self-conscious. She deserves a drink like any man. Yeah! Too bloody right. Too bloody right. In movie history, it's a hallmark of the great epic that it takes ages to make. But Australia comes with another special qualification. Right? <laughs> How many babies were conceived on this shoot? <laughs> the the rumour is... Oh, OK, I've heard 15 <laughs> babies on this shoot alone. One I know of, uh, apart from Nicole's, where the couple met on the film, conceived and gave birth while the film was still... That is an epic. That is an epic, and you know, that was a story that no one told the studio. <laughs> That's the point where they go, all right, shut that goddamn movie down. They're producing children, they're rearing children, they're going to goddamn college. Get rid of it. In showbiz, the hardest thing to live up to is the high expectation of the audience. And this film, Australia, is brimful of hype and hope. But if passion alone can drive the greatest success, then Hugh Jackman is on a winner. A movie can definitely make a difference. And, and I think what this movie is going to do, from what I've seen, what it does for me, is, is make us realise that it does not matter where you come from, the colour of your skin. All that matters is you're with the people you love. And that's sort of what the movie's about, and I think there couldn't be a better time for it to come out. I'm glad I was making notes. <laughs> Do I sound like a salesman? I, I, I mean it. I hope I don't no, sound like no, a salesman. No, no, you sound very thoughtful, actually. Oh, good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, and thanks for painting these backdrops. I mean, they're amazing, Charles. You think I got the sky right? I think I the sky maybe is good. Thanks, mate. <laughs> good on you. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.